updating probabilities deeper into bays. The other day we had lunch with the bear, and the bear was doing two of his favorite activities. The first was eating salmon, and in between bites he was complaining about bays. He said, I hear terms like updating probabilities and priors and posteriors, but Bayes' law is an equation. What changes? What are they updating? Before and after what? Good questions. And spoiler alert, this is the picture that we're going to go to, but we're not going to get there just yet. Let's start with Bayes. Bayes' law literally says the probability of A given B equals the probability of B given A divided by the probability of B times the probability of A. There are three ways to use Bayes. All of them are actually right, but two of them really miss the point, and only the third produces magic. Unfortunately, we're going to go about this the long way around. The first possibility is that we will use Bayes' law as an equation. Consider the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula tells us how to go from knowing the coefficients of a quadratic equation to finding the roots of a quadratic equation. So consider the problem 2x squared plus 7x plus 1 equals 0. What is x? We start with the quadratic equation, substituting in 2, 7, and 1, and simplifying, we get that x equals either minus 0 0.15 or minus 3.35. Similarly, Bayes' law is just an equation. Bayes' law tells us the probability of a given b equals the probability of b given a times the probability of a divided by the probability of b. So if probability of a equals 0.3 and probability of b equals 0.6 and probability of b given a equals 0 0.4, what's the probability of a given b? Solution, start with Bayes' law, substitute in the numbers, simplify, we get 0 0.2. Note that everyone who learns Bayes' law starts out using it like this. But this is filling in information. Before using the equation, we did not know what the probability of A given B would be, and afterwards we do know. But consider that before we used the quadratic formula, we didn't know what, what the roots of X were, and afterwards we did. Are we updating our values of x? Is there any magic here? Note that there's more math in the quadratic equation than there is in Bayes' law, so the quadratic formula should contain more magic. Using Bayes' law as an equation is completely valid and completely true, but it's missing something. The second way to use Bayes' law is to reverse conditional probabilities. So we could consider it as a function that converts the probability of B given A into the probability of A given B. We could think of this as reversing the conditionals, or even as a form of time travel. The probability of A given B is the reverse of the probability of B given A. In this case, we're interpreting the probability of A given B as some function of the probability of B given A, we're going to multiply it by a constant C, where C is the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Here's an example. Let's say you work in a biology lab, and your boss comes to you one day and says, we want to know the probability that an owl lives in an oak tree. And you say, how am I going to do that? And he says, well, go to our forest, and every time you come to an oak tree, climb it and see if an owl lives there. And you think, that's a lot of work, but okay. And you happen to know that in this forest, the probability that a tree is an oak is 0.3. And so you go to each oak tree and you climb it, and you find out that the probability that there's an owl living in each oak tree is 0.4. Pretty simple. But then your boss comes to you the next day and says, I made a mistake. I need to know the probability that it's an oak tree if an owl lives in the tree. I'm sorry to make you go climb all the trees in the forest, but that's the only way I can think of. But you remember that Bayes' law is a way of switching the order of things. So if you know the probability that an owl lives in an oak tree, and you know the probability there's an oak tree, and you know the probability that there is an owl in a tree, then you can compute the probability that a tree is an oak if an owl lives in it. 
Bayes lets us switch the order of doing the tests without doing the work. So if we know the results of doing oak first and then owl, we can compute the results as if we had done owl first and then oak. In this case, we know the probability that a tree contains an owl if it is an oak is 0 0.4, and we know the probability that a tree is an oak is 0 0.3, and we know the probability that a tree contains an owl is 0 0.6. So to compute the odds that a tree is an oak if an owl lives in it, we start with Bayes' law, then we plug in the assigned probabilities, and we simplify. And we get 0 0.2. Once again, this is literally what Bayes' law says. Once again, it is still just following the equation. There is a little magic in that we can reorder events using time travel, but Bayes can do more. The final way we're going to consider Bayes' law is as a function that converts probability of A into the probability of A given B. To, to compute the probability of A given B, we're going to multiply the probability of A times some constant, where that constant equals the probability of B given A divided by the probability of B. Before event B, A has a certain probability. Event B is some new experiment or some new observation. And after this event, A has a new probability given that we have seen B. Event B is going to cause us to rethink our reality. Before event B, we have some property A in our world. For example, before event B, I have a certain probability of having cancer. Event B is going to happen, and event B is not going to change the probability of A. Event B is simply going to be a new event, and there's a certain probability that it happened. There's a certain probability that B overlaps with A, and there's a certain probability it doesn't. So in this case, B might be, I wasn't feeling well. I took a test to determine whether or not I have cancer. Or We've learned some new information from B, which is that we know that there's now a certain probability that A and B are both true. We know there's a certain probability that B is true and A is false. And here's where things get interesting. This is the application of Bayes' law. The event B happened, and so everything that isn't B disappears. If I took a test to determine whether or not I have cancer and it said yes, then the fact is that that test said I had cancer, whether or not I actually do. But I now only live in this world where B is true, because not B did not happen. This is the application of Bayes' law. Now to explain this a bit, let's put Bayes' law up here. The top part in blue, or probability of B given A times the probability of A equals the probability that A and B are both true, which is what that diagonally hashed area is. The probability that B was true is what the blue area is. So Bayes' law describes the new realm that I live in, given that event B happened. So I now live somewhere in this little blob where the probability of A given that B happened. But given that B happened, I can expand this out now. The fact is, is that B is now my universe. I don't yet know exactly whether or not I have cancer. That's the hashed area. But B is my reality. This is a zooming in. My old reality is gone. And then finally, I can simplify the description of A intersect B to just A. In the entire universe, B equals true. I can go from saying probability of A given B to just the probability of A, given that B is my new reality. So essentially, I have renamed my reality. I now have changed the probability of A. So we believe that this is actually the sequence of actions. Probability of A is going to change by these steps, where I'm going to experience an event B. Because B happened, my reality now only focuses on that narrow part, but I'm going to expand that to be my whole reality. And finally, I'm going to simplify the way I look at it. Most discussions of Bayes' law discuss the first two steps, but the last two steps 
are where the update happens or where the change happens. We could say that before B happened, the probability of A was one thing, and after B happened, the probability of A was something else. So event B exposes a new reality, and Bayes' law calculates precisely how our understanding of the reality A changes based on the event B. This case of entering a new reality is where the magic of Bayes happens because we can use it to transform knowledge about events into improved estimates of something. For example, a series of tests into a better understanding of whether I have cancer, or a series of searches into a discovery of lost treasure. Bayes brings us closer to the truth. I might be able to ignore the event, but I cannot undo the event. This is what Bayes really means. Side note on terminology. Probability of A given B is called the posterior. Probability of A is called the prior, because we're going to convert the probability of A into the probability of A given B. The fraction probability of B given A divided by the probability of B is called the Bayes factor or the update factor. The numerator is called the likelihood, because it's how likely was B to happen, given that A was true. The denominator is called the evidence, because it's what literally happened. It's what we saw. It's the evidence that occurred.